Welcome to the Car and Bike Show. I'm Siddharth Kanayak Patankar. Thank you for joining us. We continue to work from home and bring you the very best of the world of wheels. Now, I know that all of you have been grappling with the lockdown, but now finally, there is light at the end of the tunnel. There's talk about how things are going to open up, perhaps slowly, but as that starts to happen, we hope that you will stay safe. So from all of us, firstly, we hope that you're all well and healthy. And then when that opening up starts to happen, I know many of you will start to once again look at some purchase decisions. And that's what today's show is all about. We've got three vehicles that I know many of you would be considering. And so we want to bring you their first drive reviews. We'll start with a very topical car, the Tata Nexon EV. Yes, EV means it's electric. And Amir and I drove it to bring you our first impressions. SUVs and electric cars, both these have become cornerstones to success for most of the car makers around the world. And Tata Motors is stepping on both these stones with the Nexon EV. Now it's precariously poised to either win or lose. But with the Nexon EV, it's saying that the company is here to stay in the EV space business. Now, of course, this is not the first car, uh, electric car from the company. But with the Nexon EV, the company plans to kill that one big bird of success with these two cornerstones. The first step then is to make it look the part. So it is essentially the facelift of the Nexon, which is why you see a number of changes uh, made to the car. You have new headlamps, you have new LED DRLs. Then of course, there is uh, there are these blue accents all over the car which actually give it that unique distinction of being an electric vehicle but there are practical changes as well like the bonnet has been raised uh, and uh, there are more other modifications to help it make uh, basically comply with pedestrian safety norms which will most likely kick in in october 2020 And thanks to the battery pack, the Nexon has gained weight. So the company had to think of not making it obese. The alloy wheels then are lighter than the ones on the regular car by one kilogram at each corner. Adding to the appeal of the electric car are the EV badges and the blue touches that are all over the car. And then there is the tri-arrow design almost all across the car, right from the headlamps tailgate even on the sides right here and in fact even inside the cabin so you see the tri-arrow theme on the inside too and of course there are blue accents all over the dashboard as well so uh, clearly it's an EV on the inside but what's also new is the new steering wheel now that comes from the Altros and of course there's a 7 inch touchscreen infotainment system which gets Apple CarPlay Android Auto uh, navigation via smartphone and a lot more that you can do there and then there is the digital instrument cluster which is also 7 inch and gives you all the information you need about the way you drive so there's a graph which tells you that you are in eco mode if you are using too much power or how much you have managed to regenerate and send back to the battery the battery itself is under the floor and you'd expect it to eat into the space at the rear. But no, that does not happen. Of course, it's not a flat floor. There is a tunnel right here, but that does not eat into your space at the rear. Uh, there is good enough knee room uh, for a person my size. And of course, there's decent headroom as well, as you can see. Uh, it also gets rear AC vents, but sadly, there's not a USB port here. There's of course a 12 volt charging. Uh, for people uh, who want to charge their phones at the rear. Now the trim we are driving is not the top end, it's the XZ Plus and misses out on leather upholstery, rain sensing wipers, automatic headlamps and an electric sunroof. 
but it does get connectivity features. And sadly, our car wasn't connected. But we got a short demo of what it was. The Nexon comes with an embedded SIM with 35 connected car features, right from vehicle statistics, remote access, along with safety and security options. So yes, Tata Motors has jumped into the connected car space. In fact, the company says that all its electric offerings from here on will have connected features. Details like the data operator and even the subscription plans will be known at the time of launch. But of course, let's get on to what's it to drive like. I'm very sure you're eager to know what this electric car is all about. It's actually fun and uh, you don't miss out on anything uh, that you feel in, uh, uh, you know, an, an internal combustion engine car. It's oodles of fun. There is 127 brake horsepower on offer. And uh, of course, there is uh, well, 245 newton meters of torque available instantly. Uh, of course, there are two driving modes. One is D, one is S. So if you're driving in sports mode, there is 60% more torque available at the front wheels. So at the switch of this button on the go, you're in sports mode. And it's just instant. There you go. And it's really very engaging, you know. Uh, but, of, but of course, uh, when you enter into sports mode, the range quickly dips. Uh, in fact, we've been driving it since morning. It was about 96% in the morning. And now it's around 59%. And this involves uh, both us driving on the highway as also in sections where we just push the car in sports mode. Uh, it is very interesting how that percentage of a drop is actually equivalent to 1% per kilometer and that's pretty big but then again there is regenerative braking which you really enjoy and you really find it uh, incredible that you are saving some amount of energy. So yes, range anxiety is a concern. And though the company has got an ARAI certified mileage of 312 kilometers on a single charge, our short drive did not really provide us with that. As you can see, with 85% and a range of 217, just 30 kilometers later, the range fell to 55%. Furthermore, just 46 kilometers later, the charge dropped to 34% and range was just 71 kilometers. In total then, that drop is significant, though some of it can be attributed to my heavy foot. But still, as far as charging the car goes, you can do it via fast charger or home charger. Using a fast charger can give you 80% charge in just one hour, while the home charger will take eight hours to power up to 100%. It's really interesting though that Tata Motors is putting itself out there to make a product which in India has no case supporting its guaranteed win, especially when charging infrastructure is yet to be settled upon. The electric car game is a gamble of sorts then in India and with the Nexon EV Tata Motors might not have won the jackpot, but it certainly has some good cards to dent the winnings of players who are already in the game. Let's take a short break. We come back with the first drive of the petrol Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza. Keep watching.
Thanks for staying with us. The Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza has been the absolute segment best in terms of sales. It's been the best seller. And uh, you know what? It's a huge transition then for the brand to go from being diesel only to being petrol only. And it's a new engine. It's a new gearbox as well because you get the automatic now on it and uh, it's no longer an AMT. So what's the car all about? Well, I know many of you have had this question and so King Shuk Dutta drove it. Well, of course, some time ago, but uh, it's still a review that really matters to many of you. It is the best-selling SUV in India. It made waves when it was first launched at the 2016 Auto Expo. And now, four years later, we finally have the Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza facelift, and that too with a much-awaited petrol engine. With over 5 lakh units sold since 2016, the Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza has found unparalleled success in India. But there was this one big gripe, which was the non-availability of a petrol engine. Until now, the facelifted model finally gets the 1.5-litre smart hybrid unit from the Sierras. And in case you were wondering, there will no longer be a diesel Vitara Brezza anymore. Yes, Maruti has decided that it will no longer have any diesel engines come April 2020. And the simple reason behind it is that the company doesn't see any merit to convert the 1.3-litre diesel to BS6 as far as costs are concerned. The 1.5-litre smart hybrid petrol engine pumps out 103 brake horsepower and 138 Nm of peak torque. Oh, and the smart hybrid is only available with the automatic variants, not the manual ones. You can choose from either a 5-speed manual or a 4-speed automatic gearbox. The fuel efficiency of the manual is 17.03 km to the litre and the automatic with the smart hybrid technology is 18.76 km to the litre. Definitely, the petrol engine feels much more peppier than the diesel. Also, the refinement levels, they go by a few notches and the sense of urgency be quite like that in the new 1.5 litre petrol engine. Apart from that, this engine it likes to be revved hard and it finds sweet spot, happy spot between 3000 and 4500 rpm. But it doesn't feel lacking even in the lower revs. <laughs> The new Vitara Brezza retains its slightly firm ride quality and that's a good thing because the car continues to offer a plush ride on smooth tarmac and doesn't crash over potholes and bumps. The car continues to be among the best handling subcompact SUVs. Although the steering feels a touch lighter now and doesn't have the responsiveness of the earlier model. So first driving stint was with the 4-speed automatic variant. Yes, it's a torque converter and not an AMT, which is supposed to be a good thing. But then, if you want to build up speeds quickly, it's a bit of an ask because uh, the gearbox, it feels sluggish. It holds on to the gears for way too long and that makes overtaking maneuvers very difficult. You'll have to plan for them well in advance. Compared to the old 4-speed automatic, I would prefer the manual variant. It is definitely much more engaging to drive and the clutch action is quite light too. The gear shifts are precise and that rubbery feeling is simply not there, which we found on the automatic variant. The 1.5 litre engine along with the 4-speed automatic is also offered on the Ertiga and the Sierras. And developing a new powertrain for an existing model may not be cost effective until and unless they are used in more models. But there is no escaping the fact that the 4-speed automatic is quite outdated and it is definitely time for the company to move to a slicker, more engaging gearbox like a 6-speed dual clutch gearbox that Hyundai offers or maybe a setup on the lines of the DSG gearbox on the Volkswagen Polo. Although we don't see that happening anytime soon. Apart from the new engine, the Vitara Brezza also gets a mild facelift 
There is a new bolder grille up front along with a muscular bumper too and there are four skid plates and a four bolt bar design which looks really muscular, really rugged offering a more macho stance. The headlamp cluster has been redesigned with new slots for the LED projector lamps and there's a new LED DRL motif as well which gives a fresh new feel to the overall look of the car. Also on offer are newly designed dual tone alloy wheels along with a new rear bumper and redesigned tail lamps. The interior has been slightly spruced up as well. The all black finish feels premium and you have that leather wrapped steering wheel too. But the biggest update has to be the Smart Play Studio. There are a few feature updates on the new Vitara Brezza and the most significant one of them is the introduction of the Smart Play Studio. It offers a bunch of connectivity and entertainment options and of course you have smartphone connectivity as well along with the usual fanfare of USB, Bluetooth and so on. In terms of safety, the car continues to get dual airbags as standard across the range along with ABS, EBD and parking sensors. And just to freshen up your memory, the Vitara Brezza scored 4 stars in the global NCAP crash test. That doesn't change for now. The prices for the new Vitara Brezza start at 7,34,000 rupees and go up to 11,40,000 rupees. You would be surprised to know that the new Brezza is more expensive variant to variant than the Tata Nexon and the Hyundai Venue. The prices for the Hyundai Venue Petrol start at 6,55,000 rupees and go up to 11,15,000 rupees, including the top spec 1 litre Turbo GDI DCT model, which is about 25,000 rupees cheaper than the top spec Petrol Brezza. Similarly, the prices of the Tata Nexon Petrol start at 6,95,000 rupees and go up to 11,20,000 rupees for the top spec EMT model, which is again 20,000 rupees cheaper than the top spec Brezza. With the 1.5 litre petrol engine, the Brezza loses out on tax ops which are available only for petrol engines with a displacement of 1.2 litre or lesser. And that's why it ended up becoming costlier. The new Brezza does feel refreshed and more energetic thanks to the new petrol motor and the mild facelift. The value for money proposition takes a hit with the Venue and the Nexon offering more features and having more competitive pricing. Plus. With the Kia Sonnet coming in, the Vitara Brezza facelift has its work cut out, keeping its crown as the undisputed king of the subcompact SUV segment. So that is it here on CNB. I hope you've liked the show and uh, please give us your suggestions on anything else that you want a refresher on or something you want to know more about. We are here to help you out with that. You can contact me on Twitter at Sid Partankar. That's up on your screens. And uh, I do hope that you'll stay safe. We've also, of course, on our YouTube channel bring, been bringing you a brand new show called Freewheeling, where we are uh, having some interesting conversations with a lot of people from the auto industry and people who are passionate about their cars and bikes. So please, Go ahead and uh, log on to youtube.com slash car and bike and you can watch those shows as well or join us for the next live one. We'd love to get your questions in. Please stay safe. Please wear your seatbelts or helmets if you step out for essentials and keep watching car and bike. Bye bye.